you for having me. I appreciate it. I've got hard copies uh, available for everyone also. All this information has also been disseminated to our parents. It's posted on our website, our district social media. And trying to communicate and educate the public. Some of you are aware that it has been put on the ballot before. Any extra copies that are here, if you want to take two, you're more than welcome to take two, but I'll take the rest of them back to your dog. But I appreciate your time. Let me come in here. Um, any time during this presentation, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, we're willing to answer those. If I don't have the answers for you, I will we'll find them and get back to you. Uh, but this is an informational that's been presented to our community and so forth. I've already spoken with the Williamsville Coffee Hour, uh, the Village of Williamsville. Uh, they both approved resolutions in support of this and the Sangamon County Farm Bureau. We presented to the Sangamon County Farm Bureau. So all those groups. In the meantime, the other area county superintendents are in process of speaking with their villages and cities and uh, looking for a resolution in support of this also. Um, this is information on uh, November 6th, the voters will have an opportunity to approve and provide funding to school districts in regards to a one cent retail sales tax. The revenue from this Sangamon County school sales tax will be generated from Sangamon County residents and more importantly from people who travel through and visit uh, Sangamon County, specifically Springfield and all of our communities. Uh, the revenue for this uh, sales tax can only be used to maintain and improve school facilities and make payments on existing bond debt. So it's an opportunity for us to uh, upgrade our facilities. And this same county sales tax is a shift from relying exclusively on property taxes to fund school facilities. As we know, that's the biggest part of your tax bill that you have, 60, 65% of that is funding the schools off your property tax. So this is a shift from relying exclusively on those property taxes. In early August, uh, my Board of Education passed a public resolution uh, building trust and transparency with the community stating exactly what we were planning on doing with this funding if, if, if this uh, referendum for the county sales tax passes. We're planning on enhancing our school security and safety, planning on using the revenue to pay off existing annual debt certificate payments, planning on using to pay for health life safety expenses. As you're aware, that's fire codes, ADA accessibility, <coughs> lighting, and so forth that were required by law to pay for. Well, it's unfortunate. It's, we are tax cap and a tax cap district. We also have zero debt service extension based, which means we have the inability to borrow money without going to the taxpayers to raise taxes. So even for health life safety expenses that we are mandated by the state to fix, we don't have a revenue stream for that. So when we fix our health life safety expenses, that comes out of our operating funds. When we take money out of our operating funds, that's taking money away from programs and kids. Okay. We will also pay for the deferred maintenance on all of our district buildings which historically the district hasn't had uh, the revenue to be able to do that. The Board of Education and Mr. Root have been, done a very good job financially and been good financial stewards to the taxpayers because our current tax rate ranks 13 out of 19 area schools in regards to the school tax rate. And it went down this year from 451 to 447. The last thing that the district do, uh, we pay for district facility upgrades. And all of this information has came from people from the community on the district vision committee that I created in the nine months meetings that we've had over the last school year. We're starting our 10th month meeting here in September. So all this input has come from the community to work with the board. When I got here, we needed to develop a long-term financial and facilities plan. And that's what we developed over this. And this is a five to 10 year facilities plan once we get through this. Just more information about when it went into effect and available when it started in 20, 2007. Um, the county school facility sales tax is one cent on every dollar spent for qualifying retail purchases. Um, revenue from this county facility sales tax is based on your student enrollment. So obviously the city of Springfield, District 26 has the most students. They would receive the most revenue. Okay. But it's important to note, to reinforce the people, that this revenue generated from this sales tax is generated locally from Sangamon County residents and people traveling to and from Springfield and Sangamon County. Um, as you know, we had 31,000 motorcycles, uh, bikers in for that. We had a state fair, tourism, hotels. Um, this is a shift. And I've been told that during the course of the year, our retail sales tax 
base is paid from 30 to 40 percent of that is paid from people outside Sangamon County. So people would be sharing the cost of this. Okay, this is a 10 minute video. Like I said, this information is on our website. You're more than welcome to get on the presentation and watch the video if you'd like further information. Obviously, I'm available for conversations too. So it's a tax. The word tax can turn some people off. But this is a retail sales tax for municipalities and county sales on the following items, except it's important for people to understand what is not taxed. Cars, trucks, ATVs, boats, RVs, mobile homes, unprepared food, grocery store, drugs, over-the-counter medicine, vitamins, farm equipment, parts, services are not taxed. It's important to know if it's not currently taxed, it will not be taxed. Um, what can this tax be used for? As I mentioned, it's for facilities and maintenance. Okay, improve our safety and security, facility upgrades, new building construction, energy efficiency, funding to keep our roofs, windows, and doors in good working order, property tax relief for Sangamon County residents, that's the debt uh, payments, 21st century classrooms, and up-to-date technology and labs. So what's this tax gonna cost me if this is passed? Well, if I go to County Market, <clears throat> up the road here, $100 worth of groceries, there's no increase. Unprepared food or not taxed. $50 of gas at Casey's, it'll cost you extra 50 cents. Okay. 20, now, part of this is when I did the Farm Bureau, so when you see $12,000 diesel fuel bill, okay, uh, there's no increase. $35,000 car or truck, no increase. $7 worth of fast food, seven cents. You buy a TV, which now $450 TV is kind of an upper level TV cost, uh, $4.50. $40 worth of medicine, and that might be cheap, but there'll be no increase on your medicine. Um, $500 worth of bound wire, if you bought that at retail, a farm at home, it cost you $5, but if farmers purchase the, the farm input or inputs in commercial, like they do their seed, chemical, and so forth, there's no charge. Everybody needs work clothes. When I spoke to the farmers, $175 of work clothes, that's really not that much because we're all going to spend $100, $150 on a pair of boots, so that costs you $1.75. Okay. Um, $580,000 new combine, no increase. That's pretty important. I talked about the uses of the sales tax already. You have a slide in there in regards to that. It's important to know the uses, what it's going to cost, potentially what it would cost, and then the ineligible uses. The NLL and ineligible uses are over there on the right. It's only for facilities and maintenance. It does not go to salaries or overhead. It doesn't go to instructional costs, textbooks, buses, any movable furniture, computers, or operating costs. Okay, it's strictly for facilities. Um, I reiterated that already. I talked about what it can be used for, those type of things, just a reinforcement. I think it's important for us to note that there's been 51 counties in the state of Illinois that's already passed this uh, county facility sales tax. The one in the green, uh, the green counties have passed it. The ones in the purple are running it this November. Uh, the ones in the blue have failed. So you can see, I'm sure pretty much everybody in this room goes to Lincoln. That's in Logan County. We we'll go to Logan County and spend money. We we'll go to Morgan County and Jacksonville. We we'll go to Christian County and Taylorville. We we'll go to Decatur. We we'll go to Champaign. All along 72, you know, through the Crichton, we're cut, we're cut right in the middle of the state of Illinois. You've got 72 that runs for Vermillion County to Adams County right through Sangamon, and you've got 55. Two big major transportation arteries that go through the state of Illinois. Those are people who are traveling. So the question is, is it time for people who travel to Sangamon County to help pay for our schools? Because we travel to those other communities and we're paying for their schools. This is just an example of the revenue that's estimated that the schools would receive in the county. As I mentioned before, it's based on enrollment, so uh, pretty close to $21 million estimate from the county. You can see that Springfield would get 10. Williamsville is estimated around $1,063,000. Okay. People ask and people want to know and people need to be informed where the revenues go. The revenues do not flow through the Illinois General Assembly. It does not go into the legislators' coffers. Um, in regards to the way the law is set now. So it's not part of the budget process. Shoppers spend the money in the county. They purchase the retail items that are qualified, taxable. 
The money goes to the Illinois Department of Revenue where they withhold 2%, which is their handling fee. And then the money is transferred to the Regional Office of Education. And our Regional Office of Education in Sangamon and Menard County is located there on Dirksen by the <coughs> Juvenile Detention Center. So the money goes to there, and Jeff Bones, the Regional Superintendent, will disperse the money monthly based on your enrollment, and then that's how it gets to the school. If this passes, we're projected to start receiving revenue in October of 2019. <coughs> but it's important to note that the General Assembly does not come up with this money. This is the ballot language. Uh, it's mandated language that will be on your on the uh, ballot November 6th. States there shall retailers occupational tax and service occupational tax commonly refer as a sales tax be imposed in the same county at a rate of 1% to be used exclusively for school facility purposes. There is nothing else that we can use this money for. My Board of Education has taken a public resolution and stated specifically what they are going to do with it. We get audited. If we do anything else with it, we will have a finding and we'll be in trouble. As I mentioned before, I restated our approved priorities, enhance school security and safety, utilize revenue to pay off existing debt and annual debt certificates, utilize revenue for health life safety expenses, revenue for deferred maintenance on all district buildings, and revenue over time for district facility upgrades. This is a five to 10 year facility plan. Our financial plan that we create is, is to accrue three to four months of fund balances and all funds will work on it. So here's some examples I'd like to show you in regards to our deferred maintenance that we haven't had the opportunity to fix and repair because lack of revenue streams for operations or buildings. Um, you can see the middle school there on the left, uh, gym roof, these are all need to be re-roofed. Um, to the right is Sherman Elementary School. You can see where the drop-off area is in the building, those roofs there. Uh, roofs back on the kindergarten wing, and then roofs there in the middle of the building. High school roofs on your right are repaired, and all these roofs leak. <coughs> and I'll show you an example on how we capture water. Uh, uh, we've got some, some rains coming in on uh, Wednesday night. We're going to prepare for that. So then to the junior high building on the right, you can see the old sixth grade wing down here at the bottom, uh, where number one is, number two over the old gym. Uh, junior high and then three and then primary school there. So we've been fixing and repairing. So this is what I call, I got up on the roofs and I checked out the roofs and I walked all over. This is Pack City. All those little patches over there are holes within the roofs with leaks. And you can see where the big water on the slide on the right where the water is stayed and so forth. So this is what we do to catch the water, especially the one over here on the right where you can see the water dry. We drop the ceiling out. You guys have a drywall ceiling. We've got drop ceilings. So put some boards up there, some garbage cans in there, and it catches it. We've got to keep dumping them because water weighs a lot. This is another example of high school seams that need to be rid of. This is our HVAC systems. All of these items are the priorities of the Board of Education. Um, this is an older HVAC system. You can tell by the amount of sheet metal, the condensation and heat that's transferred and lost. It's not a very efficient facility that you have in it. But this is just an example of the upstairs HVAC for the high school. I've got some estimates in regards to potential costs. If we did HVAC lighting and roofs uh, for all of our buildings, it's $5.6 million, broken down by each building there. This is another example if we phase this in within regards to plumbing ADA, Fire alarm, architectural upgrades, uh, 10.5 million. This is a little bit more of an expansive job, but this is would be paid for by a revenue stream generated from everyone in the same county based on our enrollment. Okay. School security, we're taking the needed steps for that, and I sent out an informational email to the community tonight in regards to our school security platform upgrades. So we're moving forward. We've got cameras, door locking systems, buzzer systems. So we're moving forward with our school security. Just here's some examples. Uh, all of this information, I think it's very important to note because we had great community output from the people of Williamsville and Sherman to participate on this district vision committee and the conversations that we had. Um, all of this information came from them. This is an example of an elementary classroom upgrade, finishes and paint. This is our current high school band room. We appreciate and we have a great fine arts program. This is a very crowded small room example. This would be an example of an upgraded band room. 
uh, specifically, this is MacArthur High School in Decatur in Macon County, the same kind of Macon County of sales tax has been in effect for about five years, I believe. So this is what they've done for their facilities. An example of our course room. An example of an upgraded course room. <clears throat> this is our current fine arts gymnasium. I respect this gym. I think it's a wonderful facility. I appreciate the history that's in this. Um, our facility's plan is to not take this gym down. I think it's a figure within our communities, uh, but it's just not very conducive to a fine arts gymnasium. It's great to see our grandchildren and students performing there. Uh, this is an opportunity, this is an auditorium that Riverton has just six miles down the road. Here's, an ex here's our high school kitchen, and, and this was a learning experience, wasn't it, for our people on the district vision committee. Uh, they've all taken tours of our facilities, but we have to serve trays of food <coughs> on either plastic or recycling uh, cardboard because we don't have a dishwasher. Uh, facility is not large enough or conducive. Um, we're, we're doing a, they do a great job. I mean, they serve over 400 lunches a day, and there's five ladies. And this room is bigger than our kitchen. Okay, so the picture really doesn't do justice. But, um, that's our cafeteria. It's not large enough to hold all of our students. Uh, we have to break our lunches up. Kids are eating in the hallway. Uh, those type of things. This would be an example of an upgraded kitchen and cafeteria. Obviously, the sales tax revenue would do work with facilities. This is our locker rooms. They're a lot more crowded than this. This is a clean time before kids got in there. <laughs> uh, upgraded locker room. Uh, our physical education training room. Uh, it's, it, that room is about the size of this room, and there's 35 to 40 kids in a class. For example, this is Plains. This is what Pleasant Plains has. An opportunity for their physical education trainer. Um, here's some future, you know, what we developed in regards to the district community and conversation we had. So these are future additions using the county facility sales tax revenue uh, with some uh, rough draft district site plans. Um, here's our potential facility upgrades as I communicated earlier. Uh, Sherman Elementary gym expansion, pre-K wing, K wing, front entrance remodel, that's part of school security. Sixth grade wing at the junior high, that's the roof area. I'll be able to talk a little more in detail with those. High school auditorium, remodel cafeteria, weight room, locker room, potential field house. Once everything on the inside is taken care of, then we look towards facility upgrades on the outside. So this is just an example of Sherman Elementary potential facility upgrades. Uh, you can see up here, in the top right corner, uh, finishing the pre-K wing upgrades and the pre-K wing finish upgrades, the yellow and the green. If you remember on your earlier slides, if you go back through your sheets, there's some roofs that are circled on there that need to be re-roofed. Um, the gym expansion or gym addition down there, we've got a little over 600 kids. We're at 610 students at Sherman Elementary right now. The gym is not big enough or conducive to hold all the kids at once. Uh, looking to pave some area out in the parking lot area and in the playground area and so forth. These uh, <coughs> potential facility upgrades for Sherman Elementary that would all be paid by the county sales tax. This is a potential junior high facility upgrades. <coughs> you can see from the sixth grade wing with all those patches that you saw on there, that was the sixth grade wing, that remodel and improvement and re roof. And then the pricing, if you go back to see what the pricing was for the middle school, the fifth grade building, it's around $890,000 to $900,000. So the board will have to make a decision, is it worth investing $900,000 or more into an old building or building an addition on where you have eight classrooms, that's around $1.2 million. That's going to last you 50 to 100 years. And you're going to have all of your students on one campus for school security and safety reasons. Currently, right now, our students from fifth grade have to walk across that uh, driveway there, as you're aware. So looking and being fiscally responsible for the future is considerations. High school potential upgrades. You can see with the bottom down there with the auditorium, the 600-seat auditorium. Um, there's theater storage, athletic storage, changing rooms for our plays and band and, and, and chorus concerts, a brand new band room, a brand new chorus room, 
Along with that would be a universal room, I believe in multi-purpose areas with a dining lobby remodel with a kitchen. <coughs> and then where the current band and chorus room are in the high school would be our athletic physical education weight room remodel area <coughs> along with some locker rooms. And then up the top, as funding C spin is a field house that would be open to the community uh, for all of our activities, uh, co-curricular, extracurricular, and athletics. Once we're done with all the outside or inside materials with our facilities, then we look at paving, asphalt paving our parking lots, because currently they're all oil and shit. So, as I've stated before, we haven't had the revenue over the past few years to maintain our facilities and our buildings. We've been patching and band-aiding, and this is an opportunity that would uh, much needed revenue for these types of activities. Uh, the board is and charge me to communicate to the public and we would just like people to have accurate information when they go to the polls on November 6th. I'm free to speak to anybody, any organization, or sit down with any of you and be one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the communities that have passed us at this time are uh, Riverton, Williamsville, I mentioned the same County Farm Bureau, and then the rest of the superintendents are talking to their communities within this next month. Are there any questions of the board members for Mr. Reedy? I have a question. You mentioned earlier yes, that uh, it doesn't, the stream does not go through legislature, it goes straight to revenue. Right. And you said their charge to, it was, it was going to be 2%, 1% was going to be the tax, and 1% was their charging fee? No, 2% is their handling fee. So the money's purchased in the retail, it goes to the Illinois Department of Revenue, they withhold 2%, and then that money goes to the Regional Office of Education. They get 2% of the total. Okay. They get 2% of the 22 million. Right. So then that's how they came up okay. with 20 million. All right. I would and, okay, right. that sounds a little better than what I thought. Right. Saying. And then it goes to the students, to our schools. Okay. Okay. And if it passes, it'd be October of 2019 before we start seeing monthly revenue. We currently receive revenue monthly from Logan County right now with about $1,300 a month. We don't have very many kids. Would this reduce our tax? But it's great. Right. You know, Perfect tax. Thank you. Absolutely. What well, I can't ask it. Any other questions? No, I'm not going to ask it. Only the board members. Well, thank you for your time. Like I said, I'm open. If anybody would like to talk to me, I'm more than happy. So what happens there?